And let's hear from Dan Roselli on Web 3.0, the coming death of political parties. So the slide you're looking at shows the approval rating of the U.S. Congress at the end of 2011, an historic all-time low. So we all know that the political system is broken. I think the real question is, how did we get ourselves here? So the Economist wrote an article about this. It said even though we switched from a Republican to a Democratic president, only 400 out of over 3,000 counties in the country actually switched political parties in terms of who they voted for. Said a different way, in 1976, only 26% of our counties had a skew of more than 20 percentage points towards one political party, and by 2008, that had almost doubled to half the counties. So what that means? That if you win your political primary, you de facto win the general election. Think about that. So now the question is, how do you win your political primary? You do what the party tells you to do. So one of our most respected independent thinking senators, Olympia Snow, who's been in there for three decades, recently announced that she wasn't going to run again because it's gotten so hard to make anything happen, so partisan. And I think of it, her words in this way, which is before, we used to be players on the same team deciding which play to run to win the game, and now we're opposing armies trying to destroy each other. So one of our most respected and influential presidents said this about political parties in his farewell address. And he knew how divisive political parties could be and how dangerous it could be to our country if left unchecked. So as successful as we've been as a country, this danger of political partnership has laid there all along. And we are now living the reality of George Washington's worst fears. So Scott Adams got a little more progressive and he challenged us to say, what if political parties weren't allowed at all? Think of how different our world would be in terms of thinking for ourselves and debating and talking and having dialogue in a completely different way. The fact that democracy is something we're entitled to go earn but not guaranteed. And the question is, if we're not happy with how things are going and where they're going, then let's demand a change from the people who are in charge, right? So who's in charge? We are. It's us. We the people, that's the way the democracy was formed. It's not political parties, it's not politicians, it's we the people that are in charge. And if it's not going in the direction we want to go, then change it and fight to change it. If we become slaves to the status quo that we don't like, then we will get the democracy that we deserve. So, if you think about this, and Thomas Friedman wrote this book on the world is flat and how the internet has leveled the economic playing field around the world. And he says the last major hurdle for the internet to level is the two-party political system in the United States. And some people are already doing that. There's a group called AmericanElects.org, uh, which um, is not a third party. It's a second way of nominating a president. And this may, for the first time ever in U.S. history, there will be a national online nonpartisan caucus where the person who wins those caucuses will be on the ballot in November in all 50 states. So while the Republicans and the Democrats follow a path of assured mutual destruction, the American people have a third alternative to have their voice heard in November on the ballot. There's also a group uh, called No Labels, which is encouraging people to set aside their party affiliation and their color and to talk about issues and how do we collaborate and how do we move our country forward again. And part of the feedback I get from people is this is too big, it'll never happen, it's too ingrained. Well, there is one major thing happening right now, which is, as you all know, we don't actually elect the president. We elect the electoral, co electoral college. Um, and that's about to change through a movement called the National Popular Vote. And so what's happened is states that represent 49% uh, of the electoral college have already agreed to, when they reach 51%, cast their electoral college votes for the person who wins the national popular vote. So for the first time in U.S. history, the president will be elected by the national popular vote and not the electoral college. And there's a bill pending in North Carolina right now to make us that state, which I think is pretty amazing in the fact that it could change everything in terms of Americans having that national popular vote opportunity. So this, this revolution is happening, and we may not recognize it because there's not bombs going off and bullets flying through the air, because this revolution is powered by the internet, by the people. 
But what's interesting is the revolution is happening nonetheless. And what we've gotten really comfortable and familiar in these political blankets of blue and red and green and yellow and whatever else, um, Eleanor Roosevelt said this, do one thing every day that scares you. And so what I would ask you to do is throw off those warm political blankets, think for yourselves, demand better, and take action. Thank you.